Hello guys, database migrations in Laravel seems to be a pretty straightforward and easy topic, but over the years I've seen inexperienced developers making so many mistakes, which then much later have pretty hard consequences and performance or incorrect data structure. So I decided to dedicate this video to top five mistakes that I think are the most crucial and the most practical in terms of consequences. And this will be a bit longer video than usual on this channel because I wanted to dive a bit deeper and show not only the mistake but before and after consequence, explain why, a bit of side notes here and there so you will get some random tips not only about those mistakes. And also kind of a warning, this video was shot in a few different batches over a few days so lighting is different, outfit is different, but I hope it will not affect any viewer experience for you. It's still about migration mistakes. So let's Let's begin. The first kind of global classical mistake is to not use migrations at all. I almost don't see any developers doing that these days, but just in case I want to re-emphasize. So maybe some developers still instead of doing make migration go to SQL client like table plus or PHP my admin or whatever and go new table and then create it manually or import it from SQL file somewhere. No, in Laravel, please use migrations because migrations is actually a history of changes with your database for yourself and for other developers as well. So it's kind of like GitHub and Git just for database changes. So not using migrations would be equivalent of not using source control like Git. And in general, by the way, the way of thinking about migrations is a lot about working in a team. So if the developer is working solo like a freelancer, they don't usually care about teammates because, well, they don't have any. And the thinking may be that I can do whatever in migrations or in database schema and I will figure it out because I'm the only developer. Developer. Wrong thinking. First, even if you don't have teammates, you have other servers. I hope you do have staging and testing server and you need to sync the changes between the servers, your local production and testing. So just from that point of view, migrations are crucial to be in sync. And also time and time again, I see developers learning Laravel, working solo as a freelancer. And then when they try to find a job to work in a team, they don't know the best practices to, well, work in a team like GitHub, like syncing between different environments and presenting the code and structure for teammates so they would work efficiently. So this is kind of a long side note explanation about thinking and one of the implementation of that is please use migrations. The next crucial mistake about migrations is modifying existing migrations instead of creating new ones, specifically if you have already committed that migration to the repository. So imagine a scenario, the developer is creating orders functionality and this is the migration for that. They committed that to the GitHub, pushed to the staging server if there is any, and then they forgot, they realized that they have forgotten one column, like for example, order tracking number. And the incorrect thinking may be that this table is new. So to avoid too many migrations for the same table and to avoid confusing the teammates, I will quickly add a new field in the same migration, like for example, table string order number. No big deal, right? But let me show you what happens then. On another server, on staging or testing server, and on the environments of the teammates, this is why I emphasized the teamwork just a minute ago, that migration would be executed, the initial migration for creating orders table, right? And you can check that, by the way, not sure if you know the command php artisan migrate status. So you can see which migrations are in the table and which were actually executed, ran. And in that database table on other servers, we don't have that field of tracking number. Now we add that field in the same migration, we commit that migration file again. And then what happens on those servers, which are executing the changes, including PHP artisan migrate, it would say nothing to migrate because that migration would count as already executed. And then in the code, if you use that order number somewhere, it will not exist and it would throw errors on other servers. So if you need to add another column to the migration, which was already committed somewhere elsewhere, then please create another migration like add order number to orders table. Then instead of doing that in the same migration, you do that in a separate migration file like this, and then you commit that one, and then the other server or your teammate would potentially run migrate status, and then you can see pending migration, and then the default artisan migrate would actually migrate that successfully, and then the database is in sync between your environment and others. 
That said, locally, you can do whatever before you commit to GitHub and to others. So if that migration isn't elsewhere yet, only on your computer, you're free to add that column here. So you would probably run migrate rollback to drop the table, then add that field here and re-migrate again. That is fine. But as soon as migration is committed, then you are not allowed to touch it anymore. But also there may be tricky situations with migrations if they are half successful. Let me show you an example. So locally, for example, you create this migration and you make some kind of typo in the foreign ID, in the foreign key. And then that foreign ID would fail for whatever reason. The related table doesn't exist. The field name is incorrect. The types are inconsistent. For example, ID and big integer and regular integer, stuff like that. Look what happens then. You run the migration you get an error. It's searching for the table user IDs, which obviously doesn't exist. And then of course you realize the typo, you fix it in the same migration and you're trying to rerun that migration with PHP Artisan Migrate. And then you get another error, which will say table orders already exists. So you need to understand that with foreign IDs, this happens as a separate sentence. So first MySQL or SQLite or whatever database engine creates the table and then all the foreign keys, unique indexes and stuff like that are happening separately as separate SQL statements on the already existing table. And then if we look at migrations database table, that migration isn't registered as successful. So hopefully you catch those scenarios locally before the migration is in production. But even if locally, how to deal with that scenario? Should you fix it manually or create a separate migration? To be honest, it's a personal preference. I've seen people doing various things, including going to actually SQL client, deleting that table manually, and then rerunning migration successfully. That's local. So you're kind of allowed to do that because you know what you're doing, probably. Another alternative to that, if you want to fix that in migrations without manually touching the database is something like this. So you need to mark that migration as executed. And for that, you would check if the table does not exist, then run it. So then on your locally, it would not recreate the table. And for others, it would recreate the table. And then you add a separate migration, adding the correct user ID. And just in case, maybe check if the old user ID exists, you should drop it. So when we executed that migration, that column was already created, the user ID, but the foreign key wasn't created. So we need to remove that one and instead create the correct foreign key. So that could happen in separate migration. Personally, I don't really like this approach because it adds a lot of complexity with if statements to migrations, but that would be the solution without touching the database manually. It's your personal preference. In any case, whatever situation you have locally, the main thing is to have that in sync, again, between your local environment and servers and teammates. So whenever someone runs PHP Artisan Migrate or Migrate Fresh, it would work well. Speaking of Migrate Fresh, another mistake that developers often do, this is not even related to migration specifically, but from time to time, we do need to recreate our project from scratch to ensure that it works on our machine on any new server that would be deployed to any new teammate that would join the team, or especially if you have it open source, that it would work for anyone who wants to try your project from scratch. So from time to time, periodically, you should run composer require, composer install or whatever. So start your project from scratch, including migrations. And this is an example. For example, you make some kind of typo, then you fix it manually somehow, and then you forget about it. It works on your machine. It works for all the teammates, and then you move on. But you leave some kind of mistake still unresolved. So here, for example, enum value is different name typo processing should be double s from the default now if i run migrate fresh it would show error that invalid default value may be a silly example but i wanted to demonstrate that migrate fresh may fail and you should run it from time to time for the project if you want it to be maintained by new developers or on new environments. The next typical error related to migrations is not using foreign keys. Instead, just creating integer fields like this. So for example, in the post table, instead of foreign ID, we would have just assign big integer. And that would actually work. The migration would succeed and the project would work. But let me show you the consequences if you do it this way. So imagine you have a blog system with posts table and you have 
category. And what happens if you want to delete that category, which has related posts? So in the database, we have category number one and posts with category ID one, quite a lot of them. And what happens if I go to categories and delete that category? Then you should have protection from that on two levels. First, in the code validation and second on the database and if you don't create the foreign key you don't create that database level protection let me show you what happens then let's imagine your category controller looks like this destroy method you just delete the category which probably will succeed i confirm this and yeah category deleted successfully which means if we go to categories it's not in the database it's hard delete it's not soft delete but we have posts still with that category ID one, which doesn't exist anymore. And then the consequences may be unpredictable. For example, in the post list, if you don't have any protection, it would throw an error. You try to load post category, which doesn't exist. Of course, you can protect from that. You can use optional here or default value or question mark PHP operator, but that would be the consequences of showing the record, which doesn't exist. Instead, you should prevent that situation from happening at all. So if I remigrate the database still without foreign key, one level of protection would be this on category controller, some kind of if statement or validation or some other check which would restrict that from happening. So if I try to delete the category which has post, it would throw an error instead of deleting that category. But then ultimately, the protection should be on the database level as well. Because for example, what if in the code you don't protect that? And in the database, you have proper foreign key with the relationship. Now, if I remigrate again with proper foreign key, now we have new categories with posts with that category assigned. And what happens if we delete? There is no protection on the code level, but you get the error, which means that database does not allow that deletion to happen, which may be bad, you would think. So your user would see 500 error or locally you would see that SQL error, but that is better than deleting wrong data. So yeah, this is just one example and one of the reasons why it's beneficial to use foreign ID because it's tying database tables together and restricting the operations that you wouldn't want to happen. And also here I will mention another kind of mistake. It's not really a mistake, but it's better to provide the behavior what should happen if someone deletes or updates related record. So after constraint, you may add, for example, on delete cascade, or there's a separate function cascade on delete another version, the same operation, which would mean that if someone deletes the category, then all the posts of that category would be automatically deleted. Sometimes in some cases, you do want that to happen. By default, the behavior is restriction. You saw that already a minute ago, but you may specify that behavior on the database level. And then whatever happens in your code, your database would perform that operation automatically. Another typical mistake in migrations is, of course, not adding indexes on the table columns where you perform the searching or sorting. And let me show you an example with and without index. In this case, it's a composite index on two columns to get the statistics on the dashboard for most viewed posts this week. So we have a database table post views with 100,000 fake rows, but viewed at is the column to look up the time and then there's post ID. And of course, there's post table, but in here, nothing really too fancy. We just need the title and then all the stats come from post views. And in the controller for that dashboard, we have that method separately as a private function, which performs this query. So select from post, joining post views and having count and grouping by post ID and where viewed at is start of week, which means this week. So that's why for this particular query, it's beneficial to have index on both post ID and viewed at because they are in the same query. So first, let me show you how long it takes without the index. Let me refresh here and there's the bug bar on the bottom. Let's make it a bit higher and zoom in. And this is the actual query, the SQL query, which takes 100 milliseconds. And the result is good. So we have the table with views for each of the posts, top 10 for this week. 
Now let me add that index, receive the 100,000 rows and see whether it's faster than 100 milliseconds. Okay, data receded and in the structure of table plus you can see that the index is here. And now if I refresh the page and let's open the debug bar, the query, 49 milliseconds. Just of curiosity, let's refresh again, 49, 45 again. And the data is still here. It didn't change. Well, it did change because it's different posts, but structurally it works well. So this is an example that index for performance in this case makes this particular query twice as fast. Of course, it's just one example and index depends on the structure on your query. So you need to be smart with that. But the mistake in migrations is to not adding indexes at all. So if you see or envision the slow query with search by, order by, or group by, please consider adding indexes. So yeah, these are all mistakes I wanted to show you in this video. If you want to know more and dive deeper about database structure in Laravel, I can recommend one of my courses on Laravel daily called Structuring Databases in Laravel. It's currently a text-based course. Haven't found the time to reshoot it in video, but planning to reshoot a lot of courses on Laravel daily. But still, you get a lot of tips with real examples including, of course, the migrations. So I will link that course in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.